Hello everyone. So here's a very common theme or theme type question in exams. They love to ask these questions with bullets colliding with blocks. And so let's do it. So here we've got a bullet of mass 100 grams collides with a stationary block and they talk about velocities. So you need to get used to the idea that whenever they have two objects and they talk about collisions or velocities and mass, then it's always going to be the conservation of linear momentum and so straight away you should say that the total momentum before the collision should always be equal to the total momentum after the collision. This is slightly different to the type of questions we did a few lessons ago when we were looking at Newton's second law in terms of momentum. That was typically when you had one object moving like for example one object hitting a wall and they only spoke about one object. When they start speaking about two objects well then we typically start using this equation over here and not this one. So it's always a good habit to, well, you have to do it, but always just try to remember to give a direction. Um, train yourself to do that every single time so that when you get to a test or exam it's it's just comes naturally to you. So we choose right as positive. Why? No specific reason. We just we just need to choose something. Okay, and I see here I've just made a little mistake. I've just forgotten to write here. Let's say that the, the bullet was initially traveling right. So, and then it says that the bullet hits the block and exits the block at a velocity of 40. Well, that obviously means that it's still going to be going right. Because if you have a bullet that is hitting a block, it's going to travel through the block and then comes out on the other side. I've said here that we must ignore all friction effects. The reason for that, it's not really going to affect your calculation, but it's just to be more scientifically correct. Because technically, the block would slow, the bullet would slow down throughout the block due to friction. But if we assume that there's no friction, then that won't happen. What will happen is that the bullet will hit the block, and because of that collision, it would slow down, and then it will maintain the same velocity throughout the block, and then exit on the other side. So when using this formula, we know that it's always with two objects, so we can open up our brackets like this. As I said, some teachers like to group certain parts together, but you don't have to. I like to keep it simplified like this. And so we're going to have a bullet and a block. Okay, so I'm just going to call the bullet, uh, I'll just say BU and then the block, oh no, let's call bullet, let's say that the bullet is A and let's call the block, we'll call that B. So now we just have mass A, velocity A. Why mass times velocity? Because that's momentum and that's what this formula is about. Now that's going to be initial, this one will be initial and so that's going to be B, velocity of B and then this will be MA, velocity of A, but that's going to be final and then final means after the collision, and then MB, VB, and then final. Okay, now you just fill everything in. So A is our bullet, which is 100 grams. Please be careful that you convert that into kilograms, and so that's going to be 0 0.1 kilograms. Its initial velocity was 100 meters per second. I can keep that positive because it's going to the right. Plus, the mass of the block is 2 kilograms, but its initial velocity is 0. Why? Because it's initially stationary. And now we fill in the information of the bullet after the collision, so it's still going to have a mass of 0, 0,1. And I know, of course, in real life it would probably have a little bit of wood shavings on it as it went through the block, but remember, we've, we simplify things quite a lot in high school physics. So it's still going to have a mass of 0 0.1, it's still going to have a velocity, or it's going to now have a velocity of 40. The block is still going to have a mass of 2. I know in real life it would have a mass that is less. Why? Because as the bullet passes through, it would take some of the wood out. But we don't look at things like that, okay? So it's still going to have a mass of 2. And by the way, they don't even really look at that in real life, because it makes the answer it barely changes the answer so don't stress about that and then we don't know what the velocity of the block is afterwards but now it just becomes a simple equation where this on the left just becomes 10 plus 0 equals to 4 plus 2 times velocity of block and so if you move the 4 over we end up with 6 equals to 2 times velocity of block and then you just divide by 2 so therefore the velocity of the block is going to be 3 meters per second to the right. Why do I say to the right? Because I get an, a positive answer and I chose right as positive.